Hey everyone, it's nearly 11 o'clock on Thursday evening and it's the 28th of November. And in this video I want to discuss model trains. Um, but uh, first, I just want to say I've got a heck of a lot more stuff since the last video I did showing the Caledonian Bell. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I showed the other stuff I bought. But I'll go through it in this video anyway. So, a few weeks ago I did buy a job lot of uh, Hornby stuff. Um, quite locally, it's actually around the corner from Mum's. Um, that day Cat's Custom Trikes was over, so we both walked down there together and she helped me bring it on. Um, I'll show you what that comprised of, but it was basically a full set and some remnants of a set. Plus a few accessories and things, so we'll have a look at those shortly. Then my stepdad sorted out some um, locomotives and stuff for me, and some points and or switch tracks if you prefer, and whatnot. Um, after he'd managed to get into his model railway room and just clear everything out, lay some carpet and whatnot. Then last week. Because he'd spent like a couple of weeks trying to get everything working fine and whatnot and servicing locomotives and cleaning the track. Because his layout, the system he picked, because he thought that would actually be better than putting a, a removable section in by the door, which he would have had to have done to make a, you know, a full circuit. He um, had the track run along the top, the main part of the layout, right? And it went down what they call a helix, which is basically a spiral at one end underneath the main layout and then back up another helix the other end and then back down of course that would de vary depending on which way you want to send the trains um, but he was having some problems uh, he wasn't happy with his wiring because it just looked like a complete rat's nest and there was just bodges here there and everywhere so he wasn't happy with that even though it did work he just wasn't happy with it um, one of his points was actually causing problems and needed to be ripped up anyway. Every time a locomotive hit it, it shorted out. Don't know why. We couldn't see anything wrong with the point, but it was only that one it happened on. And the helixes were proving to be an absolute pain in the friggin' ass to clean. Um, plus he had to crawl underneath those and pop up like a little manhole he made in the middle to clean them and whatnot, and I think with his knees and his sciatica and whatnot, that just wasn't proving very helpful. <laughs> so he decided to just rip the whole lot out again, a whole lot out and start again. Um, so I got a whole bunch of track as well. Not all of it. He has kept all the uh, the new stuff he bought for that layout because it was a bit of a mix. The way it did work, he had at least two circuits cleaned up and working great, but. The rest of it was just proving a bit too difficult, I think. Um, and with sidings underneath the main layout as well as on top, there was just point motors and switches every bloody way, so it looked like a complete rat's nest. So yeah, he just decided to rip it out. He's already rebuilt the benches, he's got a circular. Um, and he's got the section all built to go in the door, so once you've gone into the railway room, you then put that section in and it's all designed so when you drop it in it makes connection because I did ask, I, I was wondering how that worked. But yeah, um, he's just waiting for like, the, I can't remember what he said it was, no, like little metal pins or something that it drops onto and makes connection. Um, yeah, so that's all done. So, shall I show you what I've got? Alright, so, sitting here I've got two what they call HSTs, high speed trains. See, I'm learning, <laughs> slowly, but I'm learning. Uh, these two shorter coaches go with the shorter HST, if you notice, these two are a bit shorter than this one. Uh, and the four there go with this one. Although I'm not actually sure if all four came with this set, because obviously these are old Hornby sets that you could have bought back in the 80s, I believe. If I go wrong, poke me in the eye with a sharp stick or something, I don't know. <laughs> Correct me. Gently, preferably, but like I said, feel free to poke me in the eye with a sharp stick. Anywho. 
Um, but my stepdad did say, because um, he originally gave me those, and then we found these sort of later on in a box of coaches and stuff, and he gave me those as well, and he said, if you want, eBay them, um, and then use the money to buy something else for the railway or something, but I don't know if it's going to work on my layout, because I don't know what sort of layout I'm actually going to go for now. I've got, like, a few ideas, um, which is something I want to pick your brains on later. Uh, so yeah, for now, I will keep all four, but if I find it's too long for whatever layout I go for, then I will sell just two of these and keep two. Anyway, there's a bunch of curved track. There's some larger curves there. Um, I've also got four packs of track like that, all bunched up like this in the lounge. And they're on eBay at the moment, because quite frankly, I don't think I need any more. Not for what I plan to do anyway. Um... If they sell, they sell. If they don't, then I won't bother. But as you can see, they are different. Slightly different radius as well if I get them lined up. See? There we go. I've got the ends lined up there. Um, that's why I kept these ones. Because I thought, I've got enough of these larger ones. I'll just have them. Well, I've only got one in here of these um, shallower or shorter radius ones. So I kept those. Um, but only one of my... Job lots of track, it's got a bid on at the minute, so I may end up keeping the rest for now. Anywho, this track is what I got with that job lot I bought, that I mentioned earlier in the video. Well, not all of it. Eight of these came out of the Caledonian Bell train set. I've put everything in here, so and there's a the truck for the Caledonian Bell and the coaches buried there as well. And there's the loco itself. Um, there's a controller my stepdad gave me with a 12 volt auxiliary output there. Might come in handy for the sort of layout I want to do, or at least one of them, if I go for two. I don't know yet. Um, yeah, and it came with a bunch of straight track, which is buried under there, including the, um, what they call the power tracks, which you plug these controllers into. Which, that job lot also came with two, which is how I knew there was at least two sets there at one point. Incorrect adapter for one of them though, it was only a 12 volt, but I, um, I found the correct one. I think it's not that one, it's just an odd Hornby one that I found. Which is a 16 volter. Which one of these controllers is actually 16 volt. There's another one that I found somewhere, I don't know where it is at a minute. Oh well, that's not important. Yeah, there's some points in here that my stepdad gave me as well. And this. A little engine shed, a little signal box as well. There's some sort of locomotive spares there that I kept hold of. Can't see a use for these, I don't even know what they are. So I think I might just, I don't know, bin them or something. He did say whatever, I didn't want bin because it's not worth anything. Um, I do have a scrap locomotive actually, there's the base of it, there's the body, uh, which I actually do want to keep because I do want to stick one in a siding somewhere. Uh, what else? Oh, there's a couple of trucks down there, the grey and the brown one that came with the job that I bought, along with uh, these two tankers, there's a yellow one and there's a milk one somewhere, there it is. Put those down there. Plus, Annie and Clarabel from Thomas the Tank Engine and one of the naughty trucks. But no Thomas the Tank Engine. But I don't particularly want to pay 50 quid for Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Here's an old coach my stepdad gave me. So I've got three old coaches now, different colours, but yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Oh yeah, this box car came with the um, job lot I bought as well. There was quite a bit there. Uh, what else? Look. Oh, here's the locomotive. That's hiding down here. That, the one that came with the job lot, anyway. Let's put these... That's the Caledonian Bell one. Here we go. I've got the um, WGR one. Was that a CR? I can't quite see. That does actually work. Works fine. 
it did have a bit of a wobble down the track like that but it's due to wheel spacing and I have widened the wheels a little bit which has helped it's not 100% perfect but it's a lot better than it was there's one of my favorite ones that my stepdad gave me when I bought the Caledonian Bell because I've always liked that one and the other day when we were actually going through a lot of his locomotives and whatnot he gave me another one which was this one, although it didn't have the green body on it. He gave me the green body separately, because he's already got two of these locomotives with the green bodies on. Um, this train actually came with the red one on, but I'm not that keen on the red one, so I put the green one on. And that works an absolute treat going around the track. It really does. So it has become my second favourite one, that is. In fact, eventually that one might get sold along with the burgundy one because I'm not that keen on it. Actually, I might keep that one. I don't know. One of them I'll get rid of, one I'll keep. I don't know yet. Uh, there's a box of track here as well. A bunch more points. You can see they're used. Still got a lot of his, um, what they call it, the gravel stuff on it. Ballast. Some short straights, and then there's just sort of like a mix of uh, some points and some really short bits of curve and whatnot. Some spare train wheels have gotten in here as well. Uh, don't mind the screws, I've been up to things in the flat. A whole bunch of straights there. And in here is, well, he gave me a couple of these Hornby... Um, sort of utility poles, but you also gain me these point switches. They're just a solenoid switch. You know, you energize one side, it pulls the bar in, then you energize the other side, and it pulls it the other way. And in doing so, it operates the um, point switch. So I've got a couple of those. I'll probably want a few more of those, but for now, that will do. Um, it's a start anyway. And there was something else. Oh yeah, I found this vintage item in here as well. Look, a little vintage switch. <laughs> you just put your two wires on there and click, 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 click. I think that's how it's meant to work. I don't know. Might actually put that on eBay. Someone else might be able to make use of this. I certainly won't be using that. So. But yeah, pretty much everything else on there is just a bunch of accessories that came with the uh, job lot of stuff I bought. I think, was, I think I've got a couple of buffers in there, so I've got a couple of buffers for the sidings. I might attach a little red LED to them. Just like my stepdad did to his. Yeah, there's the other one. Yeah, I actually quite like that. Don't have any signals or anything yet, so... And funny enough, I've only just thought of that. <laughs> Duh, don't have any signals. So yeah, now, let's just head into the bedroom. So, I've actually, actually we'll go to the lounge first. I've got a couple of ideas. One, I think I've already mentioned it, is to go under the bed, build a base, you know, just big enough to just slide under that bed so I could roll it out when I wanted to build on it and roll it back when I'm done. Or even play with it, if I dare say that. Um, my stepdad come up with another idea, but I'm not sure I'm going to have room. If I go for that idea, I'm going to have to make some room. Um, but if I went for the one under the bed, I would do two layouts, because I would do an end-to-end -end in here. I would basically make another shelf like this to run all the way down here, so it would be about as wide as this, and then it'll sort of curve around and meet up with the PC and the idea is you just run your trains from one end to the other and you can get an automatic system so you know it'll stop that end wait a bit and then it'll send the train back and so on so you can have a train station at each end um, but I would only do that if I don't go for idea number two uh, idea number two would actually give me a slightly bigger board. I mean, under the bed, I'm actually restricted by width as well as height. But this is my stepdad's suggestion, and I do like it. Uh, but I'm not sure I could do it without actually changing all of this area here. Uh, 
is to put a baton on the wall and the base is hinged on that baton right so it folds up and it would hook onto another baton at the top there I have to get rid of the lights as well that's not a problem so obviously it would be spaced enough so it's not flat against the wall but the buildings I would replace the buildings when I pull this, um, you know the model down and when I want to pack it up I just fold it up um, or take the buildings off and fold it up but like I said I could actually have a four foot wide by eight foot long board I could just go and get a sheet of ply or something like that to make it with it wouldn't need cutting um, and it would be you know it fold down over the bed it's going to stick out a little bit from the wall my stepdad said you know would I bang my head on it probably not but even just for an extra bit of security, I can always pull the bed this way anyway, a couple of inches if I need to. But I usually sleep down this side of the bed anyway, so... <laughs> I think I'd be more concerned about the latch giving way and coming down and smacking me in the head. Actually, no, it won't, because it hit the fan first, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Uh, but that would mean... I don't think I'd actually have to clear much room... But I wouldn't want it right up the end because I would have to get down that side to model on there, wouldn't I? Because I wouldn't be able to reach. <laughs> Unless I cut a hole right in the middle. So I could just crawl under it, crawl under the bed or sit on the bed and just stick my head through. That would be another option. So I had a hole right in the middle. That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. But then I could go from as far down that end because it's got to be eight foot that way and I can tell you now that is not eight foot in that gap. Uh, and it would have to go just above this bench as well. I'm thinking of actually um, completely modifying this area anyway um, and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. You can see the record player has actually gone. I have sold it. Well, like I said, I'll talk about that in, the other video, in another video. Um, yeah, so... I don't know, what ideas should I go for? One under the bed or a fold down one? I'm actually liking the fold down one. Mainly because it gives me a bit of a larger area to build one on. And like I said, I can fold it up. It might mean I'd have to take that shelf down. But what I would do, I wouldn't take it down. I would just shorten the shelf. Because obviously I'm going to need somewhere to put all of those. Um, but I am thinking of getting rid of that because I don't use it. I've got this for records and I've got one in the lounge for records, so uh, yeah, someone might want that for a tenner or something. Um, I'm just waffling on now, so yeah, ideas very much appreciated. Leave them in the comments below. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I will talk to you all again in the next video. Bye.